Well, hey, all of you sheepies near and far, welcome to Christmas Eve 2023. Our message title for tonight is, O Come All Ye Unfaithful. And give a listen to the song as well that's on my Facebook page. Don't be afraid. Three little words that are sometimes easier said than to live into. Yet this is how our Christmas birth announcement begins. As we gather on this most holy night, I wonder, how many times have we been afraid during this past year? I don't think I have to put names to the fears because I understand how fear can show up so uninvited. We have all seen the slogan, faith over fear, these past few years. And yes, as the people of God, we are called to be faithful. We even sing it in song. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. But if we are truthful, fear is a very real human emotion that we all experience. And there are times in our lives when we feel far from faithful joyful or triumphant. When I began to see the slogan faith over fear again and again, it really kind of struck a nerve with me, the pastor, the faithful one. The issue that I have with it is in that moment, I was fearful about many things. It made me feel as if there was something very wrong with me. It made me feel like maybe I was unfaithful, really not a great pastoral trait. But I began to pray, Lord, I am faithful, but right now I am also fearful. Help, simply help is always a great prayer. My hunch is perhaps you two at some point have prayed a similar prayer over the course of this past year or two. Scripture mentions the phrase, don't be afraid, in one form or another at least 365 times. God knew that we would need at least one reminder every day of his presence in the midst of the things that frighten us. I love that our God knows us so very well. Here, in these events that led up to this most holy night, we hear, don't be afraid, three times. The first spoken to Zechariah, then to Mary, and then to the shepherds. It was not a scolding of, why are you fearful, but rather an assurance of God's presence in the midst of fear because God knew that these rock stars of our Christmas story certainly were afraid. It tells us as much. This was big stuff. God was about to show up so very unlikely to some very unlikely people in some very unlikely places. I love that, don't you? Because if we dig just a little bit deeper into our Christmas story, it really wasn't the faithful, joyous, triumphant ones that were invited to come to Jesus. If that's the case, then the story really isn't good news, is it? It isn't good news for everyone, that's for sure. If that's the case, then the hope of the world seems kind of hopeless. Zechariah was a priest who was deemed righteous. Read that, faithful. Yet he and his wife Elizabeth were weary of the stigma of not being able to conceive a child. That tension alone probably caused some what is wrong with me thoughts in both of their hearts. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was just a teenager from a town that really wasn't much. Even though she was faithful, if the insiders had had a choice, they certainly would not have chosen her. 
The shepherds, well, um, no way. No one would have chosen them. They were the least likely to be picked or picked last for the kickball team. Anyone remember how that felt? And even though Joseph doesn't get as much biblical press here in Luke's gospel, Matthew tells us that Joseph was pretty uptight about the Holy Spirit overshadowing Mary thing. So much so that God had to put him into a sleep in order to understand that this, in fact, was indeed the real deal. It sounds to me like our cast of Christmas story characters had a lot of similar thoughts and feelings as we do in this time and place. Yet these are the ones whom God invited to come to Jesus first, the ones who were afraid, not really joyful, and certainly not triumphant. Maybe this is why the Gospel of Luke is the only one out of the four that actually contains the most details of this holy night and the events leading up to it. In religious terms, the author of the Christmas story was not faithful. Luke was a Gentile. He wasn't Jewish. He was an outsider that came to be a follower of the way of Christ because of carefully listening to everyday people share with him how this good news helped them to navigate the times in which they were fearful. An antidote for fear is to come alongside one another. Listening to and sharing our stories about how our faith has carried us through some pretty tough times Faith is always a remedy, but fear is also a part of faith. One of the things that I love about Luke's gospel is that he brings the people that were often cast into the shadows of society into the light. Many of Luke's main characters were considered unfaithful by those that thought they were the faithful ones. This light of Christ is life-changing. This light of Christ guides our steps, especially when we are fearful. It's like God's flashlight or nightlight. I've been doing a lot of driving the past couple months, mostly to Laverne in caring for my dad. I took notice that more and more people had their Christmas trees and lights up earlier. Many long before Thanksgiving. And again, sometimes we are so quick to judge. We are so quick to label. But as I drive, I process. And I began to consider just how many, many people are craving light these days in this weary world. I say, go ahead, soak it in light. My favorite invitation of the Christmas story is without a doubt the birth announcement spoken to the shepherds. Outside of Mary and Joseph and the watchful animals of the stable, the shepherds were the first to know. As God considered who to invite, he sent the angels to invite the shepherds to come and see Jesus in their chore clothes. They didn't have to have it all together. They didn't have to go home and wash the sheep smell off first. They didn't have to clean up their act. They didn't have to be triumphant first. The angel announced, don't be afraid. Because scripture told us that these rugged outdoorsy fellas who smelled like sheep were. They were burdened by society's norms of who they were and what they did. Raising and tending sheep wasn't a glamorous gig. But these are the ones who first gazed upon the good shepherd lying in a manger. These are the ones who had nothing to offer 
Yet they were the first to glimpse God's sacrificial offering for each of us. If we turn on back to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, we also hear an invitation. This time spoken by a very grown up Jesus as he's on the way to the cross. This invitation reads, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden I give is light. You know, I recently saw a Facebook post that said something about as we invite people into our Christmas gatherings or into our homes this, this season, let's be sure to invite their grief with them. I think the same can be said for any burden we might be carrying, fear included. Let's invite each other, not with the expectation of perfection, but with the ease of simply come, simply come, however we are able to be present. This is the invitation that was sent out through the airwaves on this most holy night. That first praise song is simply come, don't be afraid to come as we are before Jesus. This is the good news. This is the promise never broken. This is still the invitation. O come, all you unfaithful, come. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great Christmas. Thanks for journeying along this past year. Jesus loves you, so do I. Bye for now.